You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now, WrestleBot with Bobby Chulo. All right, everybody. Don't know what happened because usually it says blog, welcome to Blog Talk or whatever. So I just hit the button. But for the people listening, so you're here. You're at WrestleBoss with Fabi Chulo. Uh, don't forget, you can always check out Lucha Central to check out all the awesome shows that they have on there. It's our second show. Okay, so we're ready to roll. But on the line with me right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about uh, why she's going to be on with us for hopefully the whole show because we don't know how long we're going to go because you know me. Once I get to talking, we get to moving. But on the line with us right now, hopefully she's still here because I'm running the board over here, is Rachel Ann. Rachel, are you with me? Can you hear me? I can hear you great, Bobby. I'm here. <laughs> it's beautiful. So real quick for the people that are listening to us, I'll give a quick introduction. You know, it's funny because one person who knows what he's talking about is Kevin Kleinrock. And he's like, you know, you know, the, the show is great, but it's always good, you know, for the demographic that you have, you know, 18 to 40 old males or whatever. You know, we get one of those um, a co-host in there that's a female. It's always good, you know, for the show. But, you know, we need to know, have somebody who knows what they're talking about and all that. So the first person I thought of was there was a few people who, who wanted to come on the show. But I said, look, let me get Rachel Ann on first because she knows what she's talking about. You know, she's been there. So to me, somebody who's actually been in the sport, which is Muay Thai or kickboxing or whatever you want to call it, that, that legitimizes, you know, somebody who knows what they're talking about. So real quick, Rachel Ann, so the people can get to know who you are. You know, on my other show, I talked a lot. I've had Gerson on probably, I would say maybe three or four times on my other show. We When we had a live studio, I even had him in there. So Real quick for the people listening to us um, at Wrestle Boss with Fabi Chulo, uh, talk a little bit about that because I know you've had a few Muay Thai fights. I talked to Gerson and he says, you know, th- this girl has heart. He goes, she, you know, it takes a lot to get up in that ring and and throw punches and kicks and everything like that. So real quick for the people listening, to us, tell us a little bit about that. First of all, why you got decided to get into Muay Thai, and second of all, what brought you to you what used to be Shoot the Bucks, which is now Fight Solutions with Gerson. Yep. Yep. Um, well, first of all, Fabi, I want to thank you for, you know, uh, considering me to, you know, help you co-host this new podcast. It definitely, you know, getting a female in is definitely important, you know, for the different perspective. So, anywho, back to how I started. Um, I actually, I have three kids, and when I enrolled my sons in a Muay Thai uh, gym back about, Four years ago, so my littlest was three, and my oldest at the time was six. Um, and so I enrolled them in Muay Thai class, and it was actually in a Muay Thai, small little Muay Thai gym in Wilmington um, called Al Martinez Kickboxing. Um, and every time after their class, I seen a bunch of adults coming in. And at first, as a mother of three, I kind of felt like, oh, it's kind of crazy if I join, but. Then I started, after a couple of classes, and I realized all the adults come in, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try it, you know, because growing up, growing up in Wilmington, you know, I've had my, my, pra- my <laughs> practice. Fair <laughs> share. And, yeah, you know, so I was like, you know what, it'd be nice to see, well, you know, what I'm working with. So, plus get a workout in and whatnot. And as soon as I joined, I fell in love with it. And um, I told my coach at the time, like, I definitely, like, train me to compete because, you know, I'm very competitive in nature, so I was already like, I want to compete just for fun, you know, so like it just to, something to push me to get better. Um, so I actually moved fairly short after I started that, probably three months in to my training. Um, I moved to Long Beach, and I actually moved the block up from my, my gym now, which is Fight Solutions. Um, and at the time, they were Shootbox. So obviously, Shootbox has uh, – great yeah. legacy in, in the fight game. So I was super excited to, to you know, go and check them out. Yeah, that's um, a big name. Yeah, so me, I took me and my kids over there, and we, we began training. Um, and that was back in 2017. So I've been training with them since then. Um, and, yeah, my boys have been training the same amount of time. As soon as I started with Jerson, about nine months later, I began competing for with his fight team. Um, and now I'm seven fights in and well, can't wait to get back well, to training. Me, let me tell you something, you know, uh, Luis Vargas, who's been with me since my tap out days, you know, we've trained together jujitsu and all, and he's always been uh, going, when he was shoot the box and training with Gerson. And, and we like to refer to him as the sergeant, because when I first got introduced to Gerson, you know, he, he, 
Luis told me, he goes, hey, man, this guy can go. He goes, he, he reminds me of those sergeants. You know those sergeants that are in the Marines and they take off running and you'll be dead and the sergeant just keeps going and going. He goes, that's cursing. So when I saw him, you know, you know, he's like, what's the word I'm looking for? Practices what he preaches. I mean, that dude is in shape. He's serious. You know, that's that's one guy who really, if I was, you know, deciding to be a Muay Thai fighter or whatever, that's somebody <laughs> that's somebody that I would go to. Now, real quick before we get into because we, we got a guest coming up at 7.15. Real quick yep. for the people listening to us, let me just uh, let you know that at about the 15-minute mark, we got Joey Chaos coming on, going to talk a little bit about the XPW days, which is where I met Kevin Kleinrock. And then at about the 45-minute Mark, we're going to have Ed Soros, the CEO of LFA. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about opening back up and, you know, training, oh, uh, yeah. fighting with no um, with no crowd or whatever. But <laughs> th- this is the thing that gets me about Muay Thai. You, you know, you get these guys that come over from Thailand or whatever, and they can have 100 fights. You know, like 100 fights is nothing to them. And oh, yeah. is that just – real quick before we get into, get into talking to Joey, uh-huh. is that just because for them – it's a lifestyle. I mean, if you want to become a Muay Thai fighter, you, you go to a place and you live there uh, as early as maybe, what, eight years old, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, I um, I actually went to Thailand for my honeymoon uh, last year. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, so we trained out there for about a week, and the lifestyle, it's, you know, we went to a couple of fights out there, and they're fighting for dinner, you know, like literally oh, – yeah dinner time they fight that's how they get so many fights and they fight if they're not injured they'll fight the next week you know so um it's very typical you know as as opposed to like the way it's done over here especially in california you know you you could do one fight in 30 days and you know there's all these different rules and so um the lifestyle there definitely is different so they they allow them to fight all the time um which means when they come over here to compete it's really really uh challenging it's a different level it's a, it's a whole oh, yeah. different level because i've seen him uh matter of fact i was watching lion fight not too long ago and they brought somebody from thailand and they put him up against an american fighter uh-huh. and i mean the the american fighter threw it through a like a shin kick or whatever yeah and when uh-huh. he landed it he hurt himself i mean that's how oh, strong yeah. their legs oh, are from, definitely from, i don't know from, kicking trees or whatever they do over there <laughs> so it's yeah. it's a whole different level i mean it's amazing and and let me tell you, you know, I didn't know, I, how can I put this? I didn't really believe in Muay Thai that much. I thought, man, if you're going to be an MMA fighter, you got to have your boxing, you got to have your wrestling, and you got to have your jiu-jitsu to submit somebody. Uh-huh. So he, silly me, Luis said, dude, <laughs> let Gerson kick you, even holding the pad, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So oh, yeah. holding the pad, he threw a kick. Oh, my God. I thought I was going to, I mean, that thing came in uh, like a baseball bat. You know, oh, even yeah. through the pad. So ever since it's, then, I was a believer. I was like, dude, that, that <laughs> oh, is Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. It's always a show when uh, Jerson demonstrates. Everyone sits around and looks and sees what he, see what he, who, who he's yeah. going to do it on. That's always yeah, the question. He doesn't, he doesn't mess around. And the funny thing is, well, not funny, but, you know, people from Brazil, they announced their R's like an H. So he oh, was yeah. talking and he was like, oh, we do this on the regular and we're spying. And, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's and, him. Yeah, Luis is like, no, that's how they talk, you know, or whatever. So, anyways, it's good to have you on. Um, you know, it's good that you're going to be well, able to thank hang you so with us. You know, yeah, we could we could talk. Yeah, and, I'm excited. When, when we get to Ed, we'll talk a little bit about LFA and, and you know, from somebody who's been in there to compete. I say this all the time. I don't care if you win or lose. When you're just just to get in that cage or get in that ring and and throw blows or throw kicks and, and even take a Muay Thai kick or whatever. It takes a lot of guts. And a lot of people don't see that. They see the finished product. They don't see the, the training that it takes and the weight cuts and the contracts. I mean, so that's why here we try oh, to bring yeah. a little bit of that to the people. Yeah. So real quick, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to get Joey Chaos in. But before we do that, um, hang on the line, um, Rachel. First of all, yep. we're going to see what Denise Delgado has to say about the other shows on Lucha Central. Hey everyone, it's Denise Salcedo here in Lucha Central Central with a look at all of the great shows available this week on the Lucha Central Podcast Network. Monday, it's a brand new mass cast with Dos Hermanos Lucha. The brothers are back with their latest advice on how to build the ultimate Lucha Libre mass collection, including what Facebook groups can really help you up your game. 
Tuesday, it's Mass, Matt, and Mayhem. The show that brings you back into and behind the scenes of Lucha Underground. This week on the show, more behind the scenes secrets are revealed from two of the show's day one luchadores. Plus, the gang discusses the current success of former Lucha Underground stars, Karrion Cross and El Hijo del Fantasma, and takes a look back at Season 1, Episode 6. Plus, this Friday, look for a bonus episode of the MMM show focused on Pride Month, including a special interview with former Lucha Underground and current AEW star, Sunny Kiss. Also on Tuesday, brand new series, Wrestle Boss with Favi Chulo, debuts on its regular night with a live call-in show covering pro wrestling and MMA from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Pacific. Then, each Wednesday, the show will be available for download on podcast platforms. The first episode is up now and features interviews with former CMLL, Ring of Honor, and Lucha Underground star Ricky Reyes, Bellator fighter Rick Hahn, and Combate America SVP Mike Aframowitz, this week's guests will include former XPW and Wrestling Society X star and current owner and operator of the Santino Brothers Wrestling Academy, Joey Chaos. With SPW graduates in nearly every major promotion at this point, there is a lot to talk about. Don't miss WrestleBoss Live on Tuesday night and in podcast format on Wednesday. We've also got more live recordings for you on Wednesday as Spanish series La Mesa de los Margaros brings you their unique style of news and comedy along with special guests. Watch as they record their episode on Facebook Live and then download the episode Thursdays. Also on Thursday, it's Straight Out of the Bodega with Papo Esco with special guests PWR Training Academy graduate and AEW star Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Papo and Gabe talk with Jack about his training at the Academy, his time in the NorCal indie scene, and his signing with AEW. On Friday, we've got the number one Lucha Libre show on the U.S. charts, Lucha Central Weekly, and the number one show wrestling-related, period, on the Mexico iTunes wrestling charts. Lucha Central Weekly en Español, with Lucha Libre slowly returning to Mexico and shows this past weekend from both DTU and IWRG, plus luchadores all over WWE programming these days, we've got two packed shows for you. Be sure to subscribe and follow all of your favorite Lucha Central Network series on your favorite podcast platforms, and please be sure to give a rating and review to help more fans find the shows that you love. For now... This is Denise Salcedo signing off from Lucha Central Central. Have a great week. Man, that Lucha Central's got a heck of a lineup. I mean, we're talking number one shows. You know what I'm talking about? But real quick for the people listeners, you're here. You're at WrestleBoss with Fabi Chulo. I got Rachel Ann hanging with me. Uh, Get ready to call Joey Chaos and talk a little bit about the XPW days, as you heard in that commercial. Um, Been in the business for a long time. So let's give him a quick call. Hopefully he's going to pick up. You know, Rachel, when you have this time slot, a lot of times people are training or whatever, and they kind of forget. Oh, so definitely. Like, oh. <laughs> he's, not even, he's not even lit up on my on my thing here. Oh, there he is. All right, doesn't look like, he, like he's at the phone. I, sh- I shot him a text and told him that we that we were calling. So hopefully he's going to get that text. But hey, Joey, if you're listening, if you can, you could use the guest call in. If anybody else wants to call in and talk, because it looks like we might have a little bit of time right now, mm-hmm. you can call three two three eight seven zero three three. Eight seven again. If you want to call in and talk, it's three two three eight seven zero three three eight seven. We'll give him another call in a minute, just to make sure that that he's, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, honestly, with all this COVID and everything, I don't know what he could be doing <laughs> unless he just either forgot or whatever. But we talked about it and told him we were going to have him on. So I'll give him a call. 
in another second. But since we got Rachel Ann on the line, we're talking a little bit about Muay Thai in the beginning. And I'm going to pose this question to Ed Sorres when we get him on here, who is the CEO of Legacy Fighting Alliance, which was, was huge. You know, they had access TV deal, and then that kind of fell by the wayside, so they're on the – uh, UFC fight pass now, but Rachel, real quick, did you did you get a chance to watch the fights this last weekend? The the uh, Cindy Galil. You know this this weekend was actually my daughter's birthday on Saturday, but you know I had to play the fights though. <laughs> right. So right. between barbecuing and coming inside the house, yeah, I watched the fights. I, I never miss them. Me and my husband are are huge enthusiasts, and we always like to keep up to date. For sure. Well, let me let me tell yeah. you something. I, you know, as you know. I've been doing this for for a long time, been to uh-huh. many fights, many. To me, I was constantly saying that I think that that UFC cage is way too big. It's huge. When you can turn your back and literally run, uh, you know, to – hold on one second here. Uh, oh, God darn it. So hold on one second. Yeah, no problem. Sorry about that. Hey, Joey, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you, Bobby? <laughs> I'm good, man. Hold on one second here. Real quick for the people listening to so you're here. here at WrestleBots with Bobby Chulo. I have Rachel Ann with me. We'll get back to that, Rachel. Like I said, there's a couple yeah. couple questions I want to talk to you about that. But on the line with us right now, a good friend of the show. This is, you know, even though he's younger than me, this is somebody that, that I look up to because he, he's got the – there's a specific mindset that we have in the world of wrestling. But join us right now, uh, Joey Chaos. Joey, I got a co-host with me today. Her name is Rachel Ann. So real quick, Rachel Ann, say hi to Joey Chaos. Hi, Joey. How's it going? We finally got good. you. Good. How are you doing? Thank <laughs> you for having me, Rachel. Thank you for having me, Bobby. I really appreciate it. Well, let me tell you something. Both of us know Kevin Kleinrock. And, you know, it. both of us have been in this business for a long time, and there's a lot of really cool people, and there's a lot of people who just don't care, and they just want to make money and promote us. But Kevin Kleinrock is one of those people that truly, you know, he, he cares about the business, and he really looks, you know, to, to keep it going. So, you know, uh, Joey was, was in XPW before I was, but real quick before we get to that, you know, as I put out there, Joey, when we, when we had you uh, advertise that you were going to come on, I mean, 2020 yeah. itself has been horrible, but it's been extra super hard on you because not only, you know, the passing of, of Lester, who was, you know, great friend uh, to me, what, another guy that I look, we just had fun, you know, and all that. And then the closing of Santino Brothers because of this whole COVID thing and all that. So right right now, uh, real quick for the people listening to us on WrestleBoss, how, how are you feeling right about now? How's everything going? Well, you know, you know, yeah, yeah. Tw- you know, 2020 has been awful for a lot of people, not not just myself, but you know, speaking of Kevin Kleinrock and Supreme, you know, Kevin has been amazing, you know, and and oh, helping, yeah. you, you know, get some funds together, T-shirts, all these memorial items. He's came up with a couple of T-shirts, mask, uh, Supreme, and a pin, um, and he's just been an incredible help on, uh, you know, for me and for everybody, for all the family. Uh, really helping out Supreme, and, you know, that, you know, closing the school was, you know, a decision that we made, um, but just really the blow of uh, Supreme passing uh, last month on May 6th was just, yeah, it was just an incredible blow to me, um, because that's, you know, that's my hero, that's my uncle, um, and, uh, yeah, you know, you know, we had a falling out, you know, in wrestling and in life, and we were able to, to, you know, to, you know, reconnect uh, for the last three years. And then really this last year of me and Supreme, you know, he would he would come every Friday uh, to help train some of the students. And, uh, you know, it was just really special, um, you know, because you just never know. You know, you just never yeah. know. And one of my biggest things was just I really thought, like, I had more time, you know, with him. Yeah. You know, I really thought yeah. I'd see him again, you know, and you just never know. And it's just it's just really been hard. Um, you know, cause I really tried to, um, you know, just try to just really bring him back. We were going to have an angle with him at, at Santino yeah. brothers. Um, and he was training the guys and just kind of him, you know, he was already doing, um, agenting at the uh, show in January. Um, so he was just kind of really getting back in the swing of things. And, and honestly, to me, he was looking a lot better in February and then he went to the hospital and. You know, and then just his his health just deteriorated, and uh, you know, unfortunately, he did pass, and it's just been really hard. Yeah, you know, it's just been so incredibly well, hard uh, on you know, you know on me and a lot of people. You know, 
and it, it, it sucks. I mean, there's nothing I could say that would that would make you feel better or whatever. But it's like I told Sage, hey, you know, you could take solace in the fact that so many people, I mean, just came together and and he really touched a lot of people. Let's put it this way, you know, I've been doing this for years. We're, we're going on almost 17 years, and and it was uh, you know Sergio that got me started into it, and we did like about a third or fourth show out there in that little that little. Uh, studio we had over there in Sunset and Hobart when XPW was just really getting off the ground. And that was the, and still to this day, that was the first time we had an hour show that went over a small studio in Santa Monica, went over the airwaves there. <laughs> and we had you guys on, it was you, uh, Supreme and white trash, Johnny Webb. And the people actually called and said, can you please go one more hour? And that's how, that's how much, you know, people, King of the Death Match and XPW, that's how much they really enjoyed it. And to this day, that's never happened. I've never had anybody call and say, can we go one more hour? And the stories even still, you know, today, hey, talking about Supreme and even the little stuff, I, you know, I, I can't give him any of my chewing tobacco because he'll take the whole bag and just, you know, it just <laughs> continually went on and on. And let me tell you something. Kevin Kleinrock is the first person when you tell him, hey, man, we appreciate He'll go, oh, man, don't put me over. Yeah, I'm, I'm you know, he, he's so humble. He'll be like, you know, I did it. You know, you could tell that he does it out of, out of, you know, the love for him and stuff like that. So, you know, to Kevin, we appreciate that, man. And, you know, even though it sucks, it just it's good to see that the pro wrestling community as a whole get together. So, you know, we appreciate that. But, you know, I, I, I got to tell you, too, you know, that the closing of Santino Brothers, to me, was one that I thought for sure wasn't going to close because it was, you know, riding so high. I mean, you had even opened up another uh, one right right next to it to do some private training or if you wanted to shoot promos or do specific things or whatever. The shows were going really good. My, my daughter and I went down there to check out when Rocky came down. And, I mean, it was huge. So many people, like, you know, that were, you know, Brody King going to Ring of Honor and, and every, just people going everywhere. So real quick for the people that are listening to us, um, I want to talk a little bit about XPW because I, I, there's so much that I want to talk to you about that, which I know Joey's like, I know, man, I get, but you got, we've got to talk about some things. But real quick, because a lot of people have been asking me, when I advertised that we were going to have you on here, they say, hey, do you know what's going to happen with it or whatever? I said, well, we'll have to ask him himself because there's a lot of people that still want to train. So what are the plans for the future? Just going to wait, kind of see what happens and get stuff together or what, what's been going on so far? Yeah, you know, you know, like I, I, I've been, you know, I do these Zoom classes every week with my students twice a week, and you know, we always talk about, you know, uh, the the comeback, right? We're taking the heat right now, and so we're getting ready for the comeback, um, and just looking at buildings right now, you know, we're really optimistic and looking forward to you fall 2020 is the idea, yeah. but you know, we're monitoring, you know, the whole COVID situation. Um, with everything that's going on, you know, I totally see everything opening up. I see a lot of schools opening up, but at the same time, you know, I'm also monitoring the numbers of COVID and how it's actually worse than when we closed down back in March um, and, you know, how the numbers are actually going up right now. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to think about. Like, I, I you know, we talked to um, about, like, taking calculated risk, how we can do it. You know, we've already, you know, a lot of people say, hey, you know, we're going to, you know, clean Clean, clean after every training session, you know, we're already doing that at Santino Brothers, you know, stuff yeah. that, I, that I had about doing was obviously shrinking down classes, you know, six to eight people in a class, um, you know, doing, um, you know, doing a, 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 a check-in log, a sign-in log, you know, stuff like that, obviously temperature checks. And I think, it, it, you know, especially since we're in California right now, you know, they're offering, you know, the governor's offering, you know, three tests. And, you know, I talked to some of the guys, and they've been able to get their test by just making an appointment and, uh, and, and getting it within 20 to 30 minutes, uh, or at least yeah. taking the test in 20 to 30 minutes. Um, you know, it's just, you know, at least something like that. Hey, maybe once every two weeks, once every month, you got to take a test. You know, obviously, you know how it happens with the test. You can take a test today and, you know, go to the grocery <laughs> yeah, store. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you, you don't want to open up and then just have to close right back down again, right? Yeah, because we can monitor a lot of schools and see how they're doing, even for six months, and say, hey, this school had no problem. You know, we yeah. can open up in the first week. We can have a problem. You know, with that, that's the way COVID doesn't really, you know, it doesn't work that way. It's like, yeah. oh, you've been open for six months, and they're okay. You can have a yeah. problem the first day. You know, so, yeah. it, I mean, COVID is going to be here to stay, you know. I, I don't, it's not ever really going to go away. You know, hopefully we're, going to get a vaccine, but I think it's going to come a time where just 
we're going to have to be careful on, you know, reopening, you know. So we're optimistic about opening up this fall. Um, worst case scenario, you know, we're off, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, January, 2021. Um, and that's just with an obvious worst case scenario. I don't know what the economy and everything, if the government's willing to close down again, the way they did. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So I think we maybe just have to work in parameters, but when they talk about like social distancing and everything, man, wrestling is you can do drills. You know, we can do drop down, leapfrog, back roll, stuff like that. We can do rolls and stuff. <laughs> yeah. There comes a time where we're going to have to lock up, and oh, yeah. there is no social distancing. We're we're grabbing each other, we're wrestling each other. We're we're in the, pretty much the closest contact that you can have. So, you know, I'm I'm really looking at that, and really when it comes down to it, I'm just you know looking at you know all the responsibility that I have for all of my students. You know, if it was just me yeah. going to train. Personally, as a wrestler, I'd probably go out there and do it and just do what I got to do. Maybe I'll train in a mask or whatever, take that risk. Yeah. But but opening the school is like I'm responsible for every single one of the students. So, right. um, you know, we're just trying to be proactive. It wasn't a thing of we're closing down because we actually have to at this moment. We just didn't want to get caught up where, you know, we're paying, you know, these months of rent. And how long are we going to be closed? So, We've, I've already been looking at buildings, and, you know, things look promising because, of like, the thing yeah. that I get excited about is you've been to the Santino Brothers in Bell Gardens oh, yeah. where you hit, you hit the ropes and you could hit the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can only cut <laughs> the ring one side. So really excited yeah. about, you know, looking at bigger buildings, uh, something we can fall out on all sides of the ring. Um, and so I think – and I even told my wife, Sylvia, I said, Hey, how come we haven't looked for a building before? Because there's a lot of good buildings out there that have central air conditioning. And I said, oh, yeah, that would be such a luxury to have a training and wrestling school. Um, so, but, you know, we're definitely also looking for a place that has a shower. You know, so a lot of things yeah. like that would make it a lot better for just wrestling school in general. Um, so we're looking at this as, you know, the change is good. You know, change is always – I've always had to be optimistic about change and – and it's always ended up being good to me, just just really looking at the positive as opposed to the sure. negative. Sure, and, you know? and, and the thing is, Santino Brothers has the reputation. They know if they go there, they're going to get good training. So once you do get a building and all that, they're, they're going to come. It's just a matter of you wanting to do it right. i got to take a quick break. Can you hang on, Joey, for, for, for a couple of minutes and, and come back and talk a little yeah, bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, Rachel Ann, I gotta I wanna pose a couple of questions to Rachel Ann because I think she might we might be able to get her into the pro wrestling business, but we'll, we'll be right back <laughs> with Joey Cast. Hang on, everybody. Why should you visit TheChairShot.com? TheChairShot.com is your home for hard-hitting reviews, news, opinion, and analysis with attitude. Why? Because you're smarter than the average fan. TheChairShot.com. Always use your head. Lucha-Masks.com by Pro Wrestling Revolution. Bringing you in partnership with Mask Republic. The Lucha Brothers, as well as Japanese legend Ultimo Dragon. Go to lucha-masks.com and fight Lucha Strong with masks from your favorite Lucha legends and pro wrestling revolution luchadores. Stay safe in style and represent your favorite luchador. Get yours now at lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now... WrestleBot with Bobby Chulo. That's a great segue to come back for the people listeners who are here. You're at WrestleBot with Bobby Chulo. I've got Joey Chaos on the line, and of course, I got Rachel Ann hanging with me, uh, going to be hanging with me throughout the show. And it's funny because we're talking a little bit about about look. Now I see somebody like Rachel Ann, and she's got a she's got a look because she's been training Muay Thai, so she's in shape. She just has a specific look. But you know, you to train people, especially coming from from a background like that where you're used to you know contact, to switch them over to to pro wrestling, which is more where you take care of your opponent. That's why you got to go to Santino Brothers so that you can learn right. Don't want to hurt anybody in that ring because you hurt somebody, you know, they're not going to make any money. But I got to tell you, Joey, real quick before we, before we, uh, uh, cause we're running up against the clock. I, I, I say this to Joey all the time because I've been in this business for so long. And it's, it's funny because I tell him all the time, but since we have this program and this is only our second show, which God bless Kevin, uh, Kevin Kleinmark for giving me a call. 
But it's funny because, you know, I, Joey was wrestling, you know, way back in the day, and we were all trying to come up. We are all paying our dues. And then I kind of came apart from him for a while, and he started doing his thing in XPW. So I hadn't seen him in a long time. And then we did a show at the Olympic Auditorium. I was, I was working for Revolution Pro, and Ron Rivera said, hey, you want to go uh, do this XPW? So I'm like, yeah, let's go check it out. So I hadn't seen Joey. I didn't see him uh, for the whole show because – we were doing a spot where we were out in the crowd. And so, you know, we talked to uh, Pogo and he's like, yeah, you know, they're going to do this, blah, 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 whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. So we're out in the thing. So we didn't get a chance to see anybody. Well, I did see New Jack throw, uh, uh, what's his name, off the scaffold, which was the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. But anyways, <laughs> I had, I had <laughs> seen, I had, I thought he was dead, dude. I, I hadn't seen Joey in, in a long time. So to, to, all of a sudden the, the music comes out. You know, and it was perfect. So you want to be a rock star, just the beginning and everything. And Joey comes out, and it was just this whole spectacle. And I've been in the business for all these years, and I started marking out. I'm like, dude, this is awesome. This is. It was just such a big change. And you know, credit to GQ Money. That dude's got a mind for the business. We talk about a mind for the business. So when I saw him, and, and then they put him up against people who can go. They put him up against uh, Sikosis and uh, Nosawa. And it was just huge. So real quick for the people listening to us on Wrestle Boss with Fabi Chu, talk a little bit about that transition and, and, and how that all came about. Because, I mean, it would, you just blew up from there. And even me, who's been in the business for so long, just was marking out because I thought it was one of the greatest spectacles that I'd seen in a long time. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, you know, I mean, I had a, uh, I, I had a, uh, you know, it started kind of like with the, uh, with the death matches and they had everybody's name on the board. And this is the first death match, and uh, and my name wasn't on there, and I was like, oh man, like, <laughs> like hey man, like hey, I really want to wrestle. I don't care. Oh, you you you're not gonna do death matches, and I was like, I don't care. I just want to wrestle. Like if I gotta do death matches, I'll do death matches. And so that was kind of like how it was in the beginning, where where I'd get kind of lost in the shuffle a little bit. And I actually had a uh, a talk with uh, Rob Black, and I told him that specifically, like I don't want to get lost in the shuffle. Like I want to want to do more, I can do more, you know, you got to give me the chance. And, and um, it, it came down to uh, Messiah, Billy Messiah saying, you know, Rob Black's looking for someone that'll bleach his hair. And uh, he goes, and then Messiah threw my name out there and he goes, uh, Joey will do it, you know? And um, <laughs> yeah, I had no problem bleaching my hair. I, I would do anything. Uh, yeah. So what I, what I ended up trying to do was when they told me about the character and what to do with it, I had to get, you know, complete different gear um, I got bigger, you know, yep. um, and then I changed the whole persona, right, with the colored hair and everything. Yep. Um, they gave me an entourage, and, and to be honest, I didn't even want an entourage at first. I did not want <laughs> to anyone stealing my sign, but it ended up being, like, the best thing that I could have uh, having the entourage because, you know, company thinks so much of you that they give you all these people, you know, and, um, you know, so that's how kind of how the transition happened, and you know, obviously, Rob Black already had the song in mind, the rock superstar. And, oh, yeah. And, uh, and, he, and he was big on – Rob Black was big on the music hits, Don't Just Go Out There. And he would stand there and say – and I think it, would, it ended up being a minute and 37 seconds, and he would go, go. And so me and Smiley would go out there with the whole enterprise. Um, and so that was a big thing for Rob Black was the cues on the music on when to enter. Um, oh, yeah. So once he told me that, like – oh, well, that's what he wants. And it was kind of, like, annoying for the fans or, some, or even the other wrestlers. It'd be a minute and 37 seconds. Like, <laughs> that'd be someone's whole, yeah, that would be someone's, like, whole interest. <laughs> and that, we wouldn't even hit the curtain yet. Um, and, you know, it just really, just really caught on. Um, it just, you know, really caught on at XPW uh, because of the character. And that's what I always teach my students about. Like, you can yep. be really good at wrestling. And I was really good at wrestling, but I really lacked that character until I made that transition um, and really changed a lot up, gear, hair, everything, um, and that really helped me out. And it, it was kind of a thing where, I mean, I, I, I was still a good wrestler, but I don't think the wrestlers or the fans really cared about what I did as a moves, per se, as they just loved the character and the entourage and everything coming out. Yeah. Um, and it was one, uh, definitely the highlight of my career, one of the highlights of my career, uh, doing the Rock Superstar Chaos and Enterprise and XPW. And and for the people listening to us, you know, you can still get the XBW DVDs, like, I don't know, uh, 
I, I even see them like at the used bookstore. I, I bought a couple from there, and it was just you got to check it out. It was huge. That whole a minute and whatever doesn't sound like a long time, but it, but it is. But it was a whole thing. The music, and then it would hit dun 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 dun, and then he'd come out, and it was just. A, when I saw it, I was like, "Who is the effing genius behind this?" Because it was awesome. So it just goes to show, you know, how much you put into it, how things can just change so fast. But real quick. Uh, Rachel Ann, do do you have the Vice Channel on your cable? I do. Okay. Did you get to see? Uh, they had a special on on a wrestler called New Jack, and we we've, we've dealt with. <laughs> uh, I've only got to see <laughs> him twice when I was working for XPW two times, uh-huh. and this dude is crazy. So uh, I I know you probably haven't seen it, but you you have to see. No, this, I haven't. Fill uh, me in. It's it's a special on Vice Channel. I, I, I the name escapes me right now, but. They show all the different wrestlers, you know, behind the scenes and what got them. There's a wrestler named Vic Grimes, big heavy set dude. They uh-huh. had a scaffold match. And he literally tased Vic Grimes at the top of the scaffold and threw Joey about how high how high was that scaffold from, from the ring? Oh, I wanna say forty feet, but forty feet doesn't seem like it's in the justice, right? Like it seems like it was seventy feet. <laughs> what do you oh wow! You guys, we we uh, jo- Joey was in the back. I was out sitting out because, like I said, we did that run in, you know, with Pogo the Clown and stuff. And uh, I went, oh my god! I thought he was, oh. and it. Luckily for him, the way he fell, he caught the end of the tables, and then he hit the rope and bounced wow. back in. But I mean, it was just the the I never seen anything like that before so you definitely have to check that out but it was just funny but it yeah. was just, just to just to wrap things up real quick with joey um it was funny because this this is the way kevin is kevin's like hey man i want to give you a good match you know uh for, for your second match i'm gonna put you against our truth and they're gonna be the new black panthers and everything like that and i was like all right cool so this is when cell phones just first came out so our truth is on the phone talking to somebody, and I think his wife or whatever. And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "We're just gonna run through these punks real quick. I should be home in about 15 minutes." And I said, "What? I said, Wait a minute. We, we got a man." So, so I told Kim, and I said, "Dude, are we getting squashed?" And he's like, "No, no, no." So he went up to him, and and to his credit, he told our truth, "Hey, look, man, these guys are trying to get their names out there. You know, give them a good match. You know, they." And and our truth was like, "Oh yeah, no problem." And we ended up having a really good match, and. The only thing was is they had these like uh they looked like little sandbags, but they were ex- they exploded or whatever, so Kevin kept saying, "Don't hit those bags, whatever you do because if you hit those bags, they're gonna explode <laughs> and <I was> like, <laughs> what? so well luckily if if you see that match uh we 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 had to keep dodging the things because we didn't wanna we didn't wanna get hit, but we ended up having a good match uh Joey chaos wrestled uh I can't remember who you wrestled, but you guys took it to the bullpen and you fell into the dirt and jumped off the stadium. That was, a hammer. That was New Jack. Hammer. It had to be was New it New Jack? Jack? Yeah, I wrestled New Jack. Yeah, that day. <laughs> oh, so now you, but the, but the thing with New Jack is, is if you're if you're a, a wrestler who knows what he's doing or whatever, he's gonna work with you. But if he, if for some reason you, you rub him wrong, <laughs> be prepared to get tossed for forty feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what I tell people. I say like, hey man, if you try to go and tell New Jack, hey, let I want to do this to you, this to you, this to you, he's probably gonna cut you. You know, yeah. I remember we were doing this match, and he was like, he was like, let's take it home, and we went all the way around the arena brawling and wrestling and everything, and he goes, let's take it home, and I go, no, Jack, no, Jack, you gotta, you gotta hit me, you gotta hit me in the balls with the crutch. <laughs> He thought about yeah. it for a second, and he goes, what the fuck is this motherfucker telling me to do? And he goes, oh, you want me to do something to you? And he goes, all right, yeah, let's do that. I think he thought for a split second, I was like, I got to get my shit in. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so no, he was, like, yeah, he, he was great to work with. I think, yeah, I think people try to probably go into business for themselves, you yeah. know. Uh, but, yeah, he was great to work with, man. I really loved him. Yeah. Hey, I told him, hey, you got to do your New Jack shit to me. If I'm wrestling New Jack... You gotta hear yeah, gotta get in, it in. You know? Yeah. Hey, well, I mean, through the years, it's just been awesome, man. You know, I, it, I, the only thing that sucked is that, you know, XBW kind of fell by the way. So it's funny because the last show, uh, Shane Douglas took over the book. And I'm walking out. It was at the Pico Rivera Sports Arena. And I'm walking out and I tell him, because Halloween was there, Damien, uh, Psicosis, Juventud, everybody. And I'm like, hey, Shane, I go, you know, I can go with the with the luchadores, dude, or whatever. And he's like, Fabi, I'm going to look at you, bro. I'm going to look at you. And then just walked away. 
<laughs> that's, the last, that's the last I ever heard of it. But anyways, Joey, hey, man, I mean, thank you for coming on. You know, we get Joey Chaos on here. It makes my show legit, you know, so I appreciate you coming on. Look for Santino Brothers to come back. You know, it might not be in the super near future, but he's always working to get it. If you want some good training, you know, better, not a better place to go than Santino Brothers. They're going to, just like we're talking, you know, teach you, teach you how to work, teach you how to get over with that crowd. You know, nobody uh, knows more than Joey because he's experienced it. And like I said, I marked out when I saw it because I thought it was awesome. So we definitely look forward to checking out Santino Brothers. If you put Joey Munoz in your little Facebook search engine, um, he keeps everybody up to date on what's going on over there. So we definitely look forward to checking that out. Hey, man. I got to tell you, Joey, man, I always appreciate you coming on. I know Kevin does too, man, because it was it was like a family bond back then during the days of XPW and all that stuff. So we appreciate you coming on, and we look forward to the future. All right, my friend? Oh, I appreciate uh, you having me on so much. Thank you so much, Bobby. Thank you. Every, thank you so much. All right, Joey. Yeah, for sure. We'll be right back after this. I'm going to talk to Rachel Ann about how they shortened down this cage real quick. Joey Chaos, <laughs> Joey Munoz, make sure you check him out. We'll be right back. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. Why should you visit TheChairShot.com? TheChairShot.com is your home for hard-hitting reviews, news, opinion, and analysis with attitude. Why? Because you're smarter than the average fan. TheChairShot.com. Always use your head. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Make sure you use your head. For the people listeners, you're here. You're at WrestleBoss with Fabi Chulo. I got Rachel Ann with me. Real quick before we call Ed Soros and talk a little bit about about, uh, LFA and Black House and everything like that. Rachel, the question I wanted to give to you before we got to Ed was yeah. that we've been saying this for years that I think that, that cage is way too big. They had to actually use uh, the smaller cage uh, for the last couple of shows because they're at the training center or whatever. Uh-huh. And as you see, that's a huge difference. I mean, there was a lot of knockouts. I mean, the first three fights uh, of this weekend lasted under a minute. I mean, three fights in under a minute, they got knocked out. Now, it, since you saw those fights, would you? To me, I think that made the big difference that the cage was smaller. Did you see that when you saw those fights, or you think it doesn't make a difference? Oh, a hundred percent, it makes a huge difference. You know, as someone that has fought in both small rings and larger rings, I, you, you know, it's like putting, you know, you got to think about the people that are going into these cages. They're fighters, ones that just went through extreme weight cuts, have been training, and you know, sacrificed so much for the last three months or whatever to work towards this fight and you put them in a put two lines in a cage that's small and tight you're going to see action as opposed to putting them in a Justin. huge you know so you put them in these tight yeah. tight quarters you know it's, it makes for for better fights well i'm going to pose that question to ed also because dana white had the press conference and i guess he's going back out to this fight island or whatever uh-huh. and he oh, yeah. and what do you call it um he said that it was a 25-foot cage that he was using, but he wants to go back to the 30-foot cage that that they had um, been using um, since then. Honestly, I wish like, – you ain't going to tell Dana White to do, but I wish that they would <laughs> use that smaller cage. Cause, and that's nothing – I was uh, talking about this earlier, I think, on the first show, because uh, I worked for King of the Cage for, for almost five years doing the uh, backup announcing for Dean Stone. And uh-huh. they have a travel cage for when they do, like, these ballrooms – or whatever on these Indian reservations and stuff like that. Yeah. And that dude, that cage is small. I mean, you turn around and that opponent is right there. So you have to fight. If you, you know, you can't run or whatever. And I mean, the fights were totally different, totally different. Action a lot of the, you know, and even, 
And even a lot of the judo people, you know, because they would get them up against the cage, dig those hips in, and boom, back at the listen, you know, they would take them over. So uh-huh. this is the question I pose to you. Would you prefer to see that cage a little bit smaller, or you think they should go back out to the 30-foot 30, the 30 cage? I think the smaller cage is, it does a lot more, but more for the fights, you know. It's action-packed fights all night long. Um, huh. Like I said, just the mindset you have when you're in a smaller cage you know, talking from experience, like a hundred percent. If you, for entertainment pur- purposes, definitely should be keeping the smaller cage. But yeah, well, you know, then they come out and they say, well, that gives the 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 wrestlers and the jujitsu guys an advantage and all that. To me, I don't think it does. I think it it's a lot more action or whatever. So maybe when they the do day, go back, mixed out- martial arts, right. everyone has to and- be versatile. Well, hopefully when they do go to Fight Island for these next fights uh-huh. that are coming up and have the bigger cage, we'll, we'll kind of see. I think maybe we might be able to see the difference in the cage or whatever. Let me go ahead and give Ed Soros a call. Yep. Talk to him. I'm, I'm going to pose that question to him or, or whatever, see if, it, if he thinks that it makes a difference. It's it's funny because Joey was up and I didn't see him on the board before I clicked on him. Oh, <laughs> But I think the number comes up on their phone, so they're able to call back. Your or sometimes I have forwarded to an automatic voice whoa. message Don't... system. Three one zero nine five one zero. Ah uh, man, I was trying to, kill, trying to kill that before it came on. Uh, came on the air. Sorry about that, Ed. For the people listening, if you want to give us a call in, it's three two three eight seven zero three three eight seven. Um, Ed, if you get that. Uh, can you please give us a call at that number that's on your phone? If you're listening, I'll try again later. And hopefully, where's my paperwork right here? Hopefully, Greg, the producer, will cut that out. I was trying to click it off before I, before I got to giving out that number. So when they edit everything up, hopefully, uh, Greg DeMarco will quit. But Ed, if you're not, I'm sorry, man. I was trying my hardest to get that off the air. So anyways, hopefully, if, uh, I'll give him a call in another uh, a few minutes to see if we can get him back on here. Are you um, at all familiar, Rachel, with uh, Lyoto Machida and the Machida brothers? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, the ground game well, masters. Yeah, well, and plus his his uh, style, before they figured it out, was, was more like a karate-based style that, mm-hmm. that, you know, that people had a hard time figuring out. So before I give you another call, I'm, I'm, I'm tying this all in because I want to – I work in Torrance. And it's funny because, you know, I never go out for lunch or whatever, but uh-huh. for some reason I was in a hurry this morning. I'm trying to get all my stuff together. I take off and I forgot lunch and all that stuff. So I said, I'm going to run to Taco Bell real quick at lunchtime because it's just, just down uh-huh. the street. So I go the back way, which I never go, and almost directly on the other block is the Machida uh, Brothers studio the karate uh-huh. studio or dojo uh-huh. or whatever you want to call it. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's right there. So I see Chenzo, the brother, and I honk him. Uh-huh. I'm like, hey, what's up? And he kind of gave me a look like, that was this guy. <laughs> like, but I, I didn't have time to stop or whatever. So th- this is it's, it's funny because, you know, for the people listening to us here on WrestleBoss, um, I'm going to give Ed Soros a call back in just a few minutes. Uh, uh-huh. But for the people listening to us, I got Rachel Ann with me, and I'm going to run a couple of things by her who, you know, she's a Muay Thai fighter. She's been in there. She's got the experience. She knows what it's like to kick, to get kicked. Everything's, this is why we pose it to her. But, I, you know, <laughs> well, I was working I was working for Tap Out for, for seven years. And after we left Tap Out, Ed sort of said, hey, man, I got Sinister Brand. Why don't you guys come over here? So we worked for him for about a year. So we would go to Black House. This is when Black House was first, you know, it, he, he just – uh, opened the the gym and he was private. He had just specific people working out, Anderson Silva and all them. So we went over there and we were talking because we were going to go. I think we were going to go do a live broadcast from like a Kmart because Sinister was going to start being in Kmart. So we're talking and he goes, "Oh, here comes here comes Lyoto. He was getting ready to fight. I don't think it was John Jones. He was getting ready to fight somebody. So th- this little black Honda pulls up and I say, and and uh, what do you call it? TV does Lyoto no justice. That's a big dude. He's super tall and he's big. So he's driving. His brother's in the passenger side and his dad and his uncle are in the back seat. This is a, like a little two door black Honda. Oh, so wow. they get out and Ed goes, Hey, uh, there he is right there. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I don't want to say starstruck, but it's just cool when they come out because you see him and oh, like, yeah. that was the first time oh, I met him. And it was pretty cool. So he gets out, his brother gets out, they flip the seats, the dad gets out, and the uncle gets out. 
So the dad gets out and he's got a blue D that looks like it's about a hundred years old. Like you could tell that he's been training in it forever. Black belt on, all tight, you know, all tattered and everything. And then they had those chanclas on that are like wood, those, those hard wood uh, sandals or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, dang, I'm like, these dudes are the real deal, man. I know. So come, I can imagine. They walking, and they come walking towards me. And Ed goes and tells Lyoto, hey, this is Fabiano. Hey, how you doing, man? They're real, real nice. So he tells the dad in Portuguese, I didn't understand what they were saying, but he says, you know, blah, 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 Fabiano. And the dad puts his hand up. And I shook his hand, and it was like, you remember Barney Rubble from the Flintstones? He was like short, stocky with these big, I mean, his hands were like rocks. And I shook his hand, and I stepped back, and he tells him something again in Portuguese. And uh, he, he, like, nods at him, and he opens up his gi. So he had to be, I would say, maybe uh, mid-60s or so. I'm uh-huh. taking a guess. But, I mean, ripped. You should have seen, I mean, abs. He had, like, an eight-pack, but not, like, skinny. I mean, he was just, you know, all todo garrote, like, like stocky. But his abs were like that. And I looked, yeah. and I stepped back, and I shook his hand again. I was like, man, this dude. So they, they walked off. They, I oh, yeah. That's yeah that's I, I knocked my mic off because I was so enamored. <laughs> but, but but they walked off, you know, and I'm like standing there in awe. And and Ed goes, that that's why they're so successful. He goes, the dad just, you know, he makes their meals, he does everything for him. So I mean, I was like totally impressed or whatever. I thought that was wow. pretty cool. So, anyways, I'm just the point I'm trying to make is that you know when you come from a lineage like that or whatever. And Ed was saying, let me tell you something. I've been to the house. He goes, and it is spotless. He goes, I mean, it is just super clean. I mean, everything's in order. It's just amazing. And he said, it's the same way with the dojo. I mean, every all the students come and they clean before they work out, and they clean everything up after they work out. So it's like it's like a lifestyle or whatever. So yeah. I thought yeah. that was I thought that was pretty cool, you know, meeting them there. Yeah, and it's that's funny. Destined for yeah. greatness. Yeah, and it's funny that they that they opened up right there. So. Hey, all that being said, let me put this out there. To Lyota Machida and, and Chenzo and all them, we would love to come and do a live broadcast from your dojo. I mean, even if we have to be outside, what's fine. We have easy ups, so we're cool. Mm-hmm. But I would really like to go there and talk to them about that. So, Rachel, would you be down to come down and do some live stuff over there at the Oh, yeah, at the Machida? Let's do it. Yeah, that, that's what I'm 100%. talking about. Well, let me, let me take a quick break. I'll give Ed another call. Hopefully he's there. So I'm going to take one real short break, and then we'll be right back with Rachel Ann. Right back after this. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre. Yeah, got got to love that Lucha Central, man. They got so much going on, and it's not like it's easy. I mean, Kevin Kevin Kleinrock is probably one of the hardest working people that I've ever known. I mean, talk about one hundred, and he's like I said when we were talking to, to Joey Chaos, he's the first uh-huh. one to go. Oh no, don't put me over, man. I'm good. I'm good. So, God bless you, Kevin Kleinrock, because that guy. <laughs> You want to talk about a full plate? I mean, that guy's got a full plate, and he's constantly working. So let's try Ed. We'll try Ed Soros one more time. I know, I know, he's busy or whatever. So we'll, hopefully he'll pick up on this one, and we'll be able to talk a little bit about that. If not, Rachel, we'll do some news, and then we'll be good to go. All right, sounds good. One of these days, I'm going to learn how to do the board so that I can just put them put them on mute, and you don't have to hear the you know, the ringing. But I'm still getting. Acclimated to my surroundings here. Hi, oh, let me get it. I'm sorry. Whoa, whoa. Three, one, zero, nine, five. Hey. Okay, I got it now. Okay, I got it that time. Hey. Okay, I got it that time before it got <laughs> all the way up. So, anyways, Ed, if you're listening, man, I, I I got that one. I got cut up, so we're okay. Anybody else? If you want to call in, hey, you got some questions? We're gonna start doing the news now with Rachel Ann. Uh, if you want to call in, it's area code three two three eight seven zero three three eight seven. Again, that's three two three. 
870-3387. When we did the premiere show, which was on a Wednesday, I had a few people calling, but, you know, I had so much going on, I wasn't able to get to him. So, uh, oh, he says he's ready, didn't hear his phone. Let's try again. <laughs> Watch him go, hey, I'll be able to put my number out there. <laughs> on the thing, because you'll start getting calls left and right, and then I'll be in big trouble. I know. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it's come back up this time. Hello? Hey, Ed, it's Fabiano. You're live on Wrestle Boss with Fabi Chula. Can you hear me, my friend? What's up, man? How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. For the people listeners, you're here. You're at Wrestle Boss with Fabi Chulo, and we're going to be talking to Ed Soros. I got Rachel Ann um, sitting with me. She's been co-hosting this uh, this episode, for lack of a better term, and been doing a great job. Real quick, Rachel, say hi to Ed Soros. Hey, Ed. How's it going? Glad to get you on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You know, Ed, I've been doing this for so long. And, you know, first of all, it was uh, Maestro and I, two Mexicans on the radio. And, you know, he decided to get a real job and stuff like that. So we split up a while back. So, you know, then I was I was explaining how, you know, I worked for Tap Out. Then I went to work for you for a year with Sinister Clothing. And then On the Map picked us up for seven years. And then when all this COVID hit, you know, it went. So Lucha Central picked it up. And they said, hey, you know, if you can get a co-host, female co-host, you know, it, it helps for the demographics. So I got Rachel. She trains at uh, what used to be Shoot the Box, which is now Fight Solutions and all that. So it, it's good to have somebody on that I can bounce stuff off of. But hey, real quick, Ed, I want to talk about LFA, but I have to tell you, before when we were trying to get you on here, I was telling Rachel about the story at Black House when Lyoto came to train. And you introduced me to Lyoto's father. And I was saying, man, you know, that how how impressed I was with the type of shape that he was in. And you were telling me, hey, man, that's their lifestyle. You know, they don't, that's how they roll or whatever. So you remember that day when you introduced me to him? And I was like, I don't want to say I was in awe. I I to- was almost- <laughs> no, I, I, I totally remember that day. Uh, you guys were, yeah, you guys were just hanging out down there and, and training with his father. I do remember yeah. that day. Yeah, and they got out of that little black Honda. And I was, first of all, I was impressed that, that Chenzo himself and the dad and the uncle all fit in that Honda. But what I was, what I was saying was, you know, cause I work in Torrance and I went to lunch. I never go out for lunch, but I went to lunch and, I, and their, their new karate dojo or whatever is right behind where I work. So I saw Chenzo. Getting yeah, that that place is, that, that pla- yeah. yeah. That place is, that place is awesome. Did you stop by there yeah. at all? Did you go inside? Well, you know what? I was, I was coming back from lunch and Chenzo was getting in the Honda, and I honked. I'm like, hey, what's up? And he kind of looked like, there's this guy. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to go back and check it out. we got to do a live broadcast from there so we can get that out to the people because that, that, was, that was huge. That was awesome. But it's, it's, a again, beautiful, it's a beautiful gym there, beautiful. Yeah, and a nice area. But you know what? Again, it's literally about <clears throat> a half a block away from Fantastic Burger. So you, <laughs> you know yeah, what that means. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you have to go hit up that. Hey, I'll tell you, you what. You go work you, out and then go grab a burger on the way home. Absolutely. If 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 we go down there and you come down, it's on me this time because Ed's always taking care All of us right. or whatever. So I, I owe him a, a a burger over there. But anyways, uh-huh. Ed, this COVID's been killing people, you know. And and LFA was was you know rolling, you know, uh, went to UFC bypass and everything. So real quick before we get into talking a little bit about bringing that back. So exactly when all this comes out, because I know you had to, I think, three shows that you guys had to cancel and everything. So do you just kind of shut everything down and go home and, and, and quarantine? Or did you go to Black House in your office and just try to try to figure out what you were going to do? No, I mean, actually, this whole thing, you know, I, I felt like the whole world kind of stopped a little bit. And, it sure um, did. You know, it just it took a lot longer than, you know, you know, it took a lot longer than, you know, I would have never imagined that I would have been three months kind of just stopping everything. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I really did make the best of it. And uh, there was a lot of great uh, things that uh, <clears throat> I discovered from you know, staying home as far as it's just like, you know, this is in, in, in 20 years, this is the longest I've never had to not travel. You know what I mean? I mean, I've, yeah. I've been, I've been, I'm traveling at, you know, every every week almost I'm traveling at, or at least every other week for sure <clears throat> and this was in a nice time to just kind of I hate to say it but I mean it, it, it's just horrible everything that happened it was horrible that everyone in Pasco was horrible all the you know the the thing that happened with you know with all the protests and all that and it was just one thing after the other but at the end 
I just hope that the I feel the world is going to come out hopefully a, a better place, and and I hopefully people are going to have a, a lot more gratitude for the things that they used to take for granted. Oh, I, I agree one hundred percent. But I was telling Rachel, uh, Rachel Ann. You know, people don't get to see that. All they see is the finished product. They don't see, you know, the weigh-ins and the contracts. But let me tell you, we went to one show when you had it at the OC hangar. And, I mean, yes. first of all, we, <laughs> we we didn't see Ed all night. He was running around. And it was like, hey, Ed, hey, I got to go. And, he kept, and even after the show was over, you know, he's still, you know, uh, counting the receipts, making sure that the commission got paid and making sure. I mean, it's just a whole uh, that you don't just go and watch the fights. You know, you have so much that you have to do. So, like you said, it was kind of good that you got to take, you know, a little bit of a break and kind of, kind of relax and reset <clears throat> and, and get ready for next. So, so you guys have already been cleared. Uh, you, you, uh, you're coming back on July 10th, right? Yeah, we're going to be coming back on July 10th, and um, you know, we've got a lot of. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing four shows, so that's that's exciting. We're going to be doing four shows next um, uh, next month. So I'm excited about that. We've got a lot of stuff coming out, you know, a, a lot of interesting news on the fights. We're going to have some title fights. We're going to have, uh, we got a lot that, that uh, you know, is going to be coming out tomorrow. So, you know, we're going to announce the fights. We're going to announce who they are, and, and but it's going to be some great fights. And we've got <clears throat> some great cards, and I'm just happy to say that the LFA is going to be back. And, and not only are we going to be back, but we're taking all the right steps because, we wanted to make sure, you know, the the, the, the safe fighters and the, and the safety of our staff and everyone involved is super important. And uh, yeah, the other thing was important is that, uh, you know, obviously we're not going to be, do- we're doing it without audience. So, but, yeah. you know, the one thing that uh, I wanted to make sure of is that the quality of our product is not going to suffer. And that was one of the things that uh, <clears throat> we had to took a, take a little bit of time. It was, uh, you know, the quality of our product and also the safety. Um, uh, yeah. the safety of everybody. So those are the two things that were really important to me. And as always, we're always putting on great fights. So I figure that that's just expected. Um, and that's what we expect from ourselves. But those other two things were, were two big hurdles that we had to get over and, and, and we figured it out and we're ready to go. Yeah. And does it, I mean, it's it's funny because I, I follow Ed all the time because he's always putting up a lot of helpful information and keeping everybody up to date, you know, with what's going on. But he talked a little bit about the uh, arena. Like, it, it's weird because just like with the with the UFC and Dana, he's got that one spot where he does his shows and, you know, he has to fly everybody in and or, or whatever. And it's easier in one sense because you're just there and you're ready to go. But it makes a big difference when you actually travel because when you go when you go to somebody's hometown or whatever, a lot of times you have the hometown boy and you get more people that way. Can, can you expand on that a little bit? I mean, does it does it really make a yeah, huge I difference mean, as far I as mean, being like that? Well, well, of course it means. I mean, to a, uh, the the sad part about it for our, our business is that you know we're very fortunate and we've busted our ass <clears> to do to get to where we're at. And we have a great yeah. distribution deal. Um, and we have a distribution deal with UFC Fight Pass, which has been an, an incredible partner. And the only thing I wish is I wish we would have maybe been there earlier, you know what I mean? Because yeah. they've been such a great uh, injection of, of marketing and just it's, just it's just a great partnership to be able to watch the UFC. And we develop so many fi- or develop fighters for the UFC and, and we develop so many for them that it's awesome to be watching the UFC and seeing a lot of LFA content uh, during the USC broadcast. And that's always something that we're very, very proud of. Uh, but as you were talking about, you know, not having crowds there, yes, that's a revenue yeah. stream uh, that is not, uh, that's not there anymore. But the beauty of it is, is that, you know, we're very blessed and grateful to be with someone like UFC Fight Pass, where we still have a distribution deal, we still have sponsors, and we, we still um, have international distribution of our content uh, throughout the world. So fortunately yeah. for us, we have some other revenue streams that, of course, the ticket money is uh, is something we rely on or, or something that we'd like to have. But, it, you know, we're still able, able to do the shows um, without cutting any, you know, I'm not going to say without cutting any corners, but yeah, you know, we, we have to really sharpen the pencil. Um, and, and like I said, I'm happy to say that we're going to be back doing shows once again with, with safety and the, the, the quality of the product is not going to um, you know, go down one bit. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's it's funny because, you know, I watch, I, I live to watch the Dana White press conference because, you know, the, the way he, the dude is just 100. And and it was, it was kind of funny. He said, you know, this is the only game in town. 
he goes and because they were saying, well, you, you know, Masvidal wants more money and Connor wants this and that. And he goes, you know what? We're the only, you don't have to fight. He goes, this is not like football where I say you have to be in training camp. And yet, if you don't want to fight, we're not going to make you fight. He said, but right now, right. Since, since this is the only game in town, look how much exposure these guys are getting. There's no football. There's no basketball. He said, I have a Twitter little thing back here that I do live and it's got 7 million views. You know, so it would it would behoove right. these these guys to come and fight right now because you're going to get a lot of exposure. So, uh, uh, to me, it, it seems like he kind of set the bar, and now LFA is coming back. They're going to start getting a lot more exposure too because people are going to say, "Hey, man, LFA, let's get back to watching it." And it seems like, that, well, especially with somebody like Ed who gets a lot of respect, they're not going to you know disrespect you and say, "Yeah, I'm fighting because of this or that or whatever." But when you put a card together like that, is, is it? Is it like the, the younger, hungrier fighters that, that are looking to get those fights, or, or how does that, how does all that work <clears throat> to, to this perspective? Well, 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 that's that's why I feel that our fights are always so exciting. Um, uh, is because everybody that's fighting for us is trying to make a name for themselves, so they're going out there and leaving it, putting it all on the line because that you know the difference of them yeah. you know getting a, an incredible finish or an incredible knock an incredible submission whatever they may do they're they're going to be they know that people are going to be watching and it's their chance you know there's their stage it's their chance to perform uh so i i feel that our fights uh, end up being very very exciting and i i would say that yeah. even watching our fights a lot of people love watching our fights because the guys always come out there and put it all on the line because they want to get yeah. noticed. They want to be that person that is going to get the next phone call up to the big leagues. Yeah. So, so, so we're, so we're not, so we're not dealing with some of the adversities of the UFC of guys saying they want more money. I could tell you right now, yeah. nobody's going to get rich, but no one's going to get rich fighting for the LFA, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, 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 that's not, that's not what we do. What we try to do is we try to create, a, 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 an organization where guys can truly develop and not only just develop as fighters inside the octagon, but also develop on the other side of, of the fight business, which is learning how to do interviews and doing radio shows. Like we prepare these guys. So, so when they get up there and, and they, and they go out there and perform so well um, in the UFC and they get a microphone shoved in their face, they, they, they know how to, react and and it's not yeah. new to them because they've done that already and i think that that's important i think it's really important for fighters to understand all the different uh, elements that 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 go into being a successful business as a fighter yeah you know i agree 100 percent, and that's what i was talking to rachel ann about before before you came on is that to me somebody like it who knows the business and you have uh, you still mark bieri still still with you right Oh, yes, of course. He's our partner. And, He's the partner in yeah. the and, and when you put that together, those, you know, with that experience, you know, you know what to look for. And if I put this guy with this guy, it's going to be knocked down, drag out fight. And, and that, that product is out there and it's huge. And I think that is what something that, that makes the difference, you know, guys who know what to look for and all that. That's why LFA is so successful. Well, I, you know, I agree 100%. If, you know, those guys are getting the exposure. And like you said, it's not just going out there and fighting. You've got to learn to handle that stuff like the public and the interviews and stuff like that. So that's what I was talking to Rachel Ann about earlier. You know, you, you just see the finished product. You get, Ed just doesn't go watch the fights. He's got to take care of all that too. So from two people who can appreciate it, you know, we, we respect that, especially from you. So anyways, Ed, uh, real quick, since we're running up against the clock, um, <clears throat> you're going to, when, so did you say when you're going to announce the the next fight or whatever? Or, or the uh, yeah, we're, we're basically yeah. We're, we're, like I said, we're going to be doing four shows in July. Where uh, uh, you know I you know we're going to be announcing all the fights and all the uh, um, everything that's going on. But it's going to be really exciting. We've got some title fights, and tomorrow we're going to be announcing everything to the media. So you know I, I, we're letting everybody know that we've got um, you know we're going to be doing four shows in July, so people can yeah. be prepared to see a lot of LFA. Um, but like I said, you know, we're just proud to be back and, and, and putting on that, uh, you know, putting on that great, uh, uh, the great fights for people to enjoy. Yeah. But you know, the people know if they put down their, their hard earned money to go to a live event or to check it out at USC bypass, they know it's going to deliver because you know, they, they know what they're doing over there at LFA. I got to tell you, I, I thought I was done. 
you know, especially after, and I feel bad because, well, let me tell you, with, with Scotty Nelson building hospitals, you know, I'm sure that's a top yeah. priority. But when we talked, you know, and he said, right. hey, I'm sorry, you know, or whatever, and I thought that was it. I said, you know what, I'm just going to retire. But then, you know, like they say, when a, a one more one door closes, another one opens. So we're opening up for sure. a whole, yeah, to a whole new audience, you know, and all that. So I think it's just going to keep, even though 2020 sucked so far, I think it's going to get better, and I think we're going to keep moving upward. So we definitely look forward to checking out uh, LFA. Uh, Ed, if you want to check him out, just put Ed Sorres in your little uh, search engine, and it's uh, Ed Blackhouse too, right, for your other social media? Yeah, Ed Blackhouse is uh, on all my social media. It's Ed Blackhouse. Yes, it is, man. Okay, so make sure you check him out on there. He keeps everybody up to date. We definitely look forward to that next LFA fighting. And I look forward to going down to Lyoto's place and checking that out. And if, I, if Ed can get down there, I, it lunches on me. I'm telling you, man. Cause no, oh, wow, thank you. <laughs> For sure. We, we just anytime, so man. Just let, me, just, let me know. just let me know when you're going down there, man. I'll meet you down there anytime. <laughs> Absolutely, and nothing for nothing, but the best part of going to Black House is that, that place. They have a hell of a breakfast over there, man. That was the best part. Yeah. <laughs> check it out. All right, Ed, we'll talk to you soon. Hey, man, I appreciate you coming on. Anytime All right, man. Ed My pleasure, man. It, yeah, Thanks it legitimizes the show. So we'll talk to you soon. Ed Soros, everybody, make sure you check him out. We'll be right back after this. Lucha-masks.com by Pro Wrestling Revolution, bringing you in partnership with Mask Republic. The Lucha Brothers, as well as Japanese legend Ultimo Dragon. Go to lucha-masks.com and fight Lucha Strong with masks from your favorite Lucha legends and pro wrestling revolution luchadores. Stay safe in style and represent your favorite luchador. Get yours now at lucha-masks.com, powered by Pro Wrestling Revolution. You are listening to the Lucha Central Podcast Network. And now... WrestleBot with Bobby Chulo. Hey, you know, we are talking up a storm, and, and, and I didn't even ask if Rachel Ann had a question for Ed Sorris, so I, I apologize for that, Rachel Ann, but once I get going, you know what I mean? It gets no, crazy. Yeah, but... no worries. I enjoyed listening to you guys, Ann, and, you know, excited to see that there's a lot of fights coming in the near future, you know, locally. Mm-hmm. And I, missed the, I, missed the, I missed the scene, you know? Well, as it's you know, up. Yeah, yeah. If there, there's talking about this COVID and everything. There's nothing like going to a live fight. I mean, when the fights are live, it's a whole different bargain. And then if there's actually somebody that you know that's fighting, it takes on a whole new thing, man, when you go check Definitely. it out. So, well, hopefully, if everything works out and we can bring you on, we can start doing some live events, start heading out to some of these events and bringing, you know, the people, the, the live stuff. And, and getting it from that perspective or whatever. So real quick for the people listening, so you're here, you're at Russell Boss with Fabi Chulo. I got Rachel Ann with me. Just got finished talking to Ed Soros from LFA, talking a little bit about bringing LFA back. They're going to be on UFC Fight Pass. You know, he keeps everybody up to date. I'll keep everybody up to date here as well so you can go check it out. So um, got a few minutes left, so a good thing for me. You know, I have Rachel yeah. Ann so we can bounce a few things off her because we were talking a little bit earlier about the fights that happened this weekend. One thing I wanted to talk to Rachel Ann about, and l- let me put it this way. I want to talk about weight cuts because there was a few people who missed weight uh, at, the, at this last fight. But <clears throat> yeah. I've, al- I've always been into fem- female bodybuilding. And I was like, man, that's so awesome. I don't know how they can get their physiques like that and all that. And <laughs> I'm not going to mention her name, but I had a specific person that said, well, I'm going to take you to a show, and you're going to see how different it is over there. And I'm like, all right, you know, sweet, let's go. So we uh-huh. went, and I was backstage, and and the B.O. and farts and everything oh was back God. there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> because she's like, I'm telling you. And this you, is at a bodybuilding uh, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you it's not what it's all cracked up to be. They're trying to uh, they're trying to get the water. It never out of is, themselves. man. It never yeah. is. <laughs> so so that too I used to uh we used to have a, a girl named Maria Rios that used to come on with us too. She used to fight as a matter of fact she fought for um LFA when it was Resurrection Fighting Alliance. That's why we were at the hangar. We went to go see her her um her fight. And <laughs> she said, you know, she was cutting weight and all that stuff and, and you know, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, she's going to die or whatever. But real quick, you know, now, now real quick before we get into this, have you had to cut a, a lot of weight for a fight before? I mean, okay, if you got to cut a couple, you know, let's say eight to ten pounds, 
that, that's quite a bit. But there's people that have to cut 20 pounds within like three or four days. I mean, first of all, has that ever happened to you? Or have you seen somebody that's in there? Or what's the most you've had to cut? Uh, the, my cuts usually range between about eight pounds. And they've gone mm-hmm. all the way up to about 13, 14 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's usually because the excess weight that's dropped, like as you're going through, you'll get the weight cut and it's like, oh man, I lost three pounds easy after I've been struggling all night, you know, but yeah, yeah, it it gets pretty extreme. I I know, I know my weight cuts are one of my major motivations when I'm in the ring and and what I think about um, to get me going, you know, like, like you said, it's all, it's not all, it's all, not, it's not all pretty pictures and butterflies, you know, in the fight, in the fight game. It's like you get, when you win, I was just talking to my husband about this. Like when you win, the moment that they call your name, you reflect on your weight cut, your training, you reflect on everything. And, right. you know, that's what you're thinking about when you, when you win. Um, but in, when you lose, the first thing you think about is your weight cut and your training. So yeah. it's definitely the, a major aspect of the fight game, and you know, it, it, it's it's a wild it's a wild lifestyle, and you know, I love I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Well, you know. And when you talk about like your husband who actually trains and all that, it, does it help you? that he's there with you through the wake or do you like, you know what? I don't want to talk to anybody right now. I don't even want to deal with you right now. How, you how know what? My out? husband is my biggest support and he uh-huh. is so understanding. And every time before my weight cuts, <laughs> I apologize about beforehand. You know, <laughs> I apologize for anything that but happens in the next 24 hours. Oh, a hundred percent. He's a major fighting enthusiast. I mean, he trains, yeah. but moderately he's not um, yeah. a fighter. So he he understands the game. He understands exactly what, you know, all he sees the sacrifices that I make and all the the extra things that I do to to put into the game and um, right. you know, he's 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 my partner for sure. Like especially for my weight cuts. I always you know, I talked to some of my teammates even, you know, some of my teammates are single, you know, they're younger. I'm right. I'm older in the game. And um yeah. so a lot of the, my teammates are younger, you know, they're all single and they, that it, that's their whole life. And I just think like, oh my God, how would I do it without a husband? Without my husband, yeah. like I, I, you know, I have him there changing my blankets or doing whatever right. I need. So he he all he supports me a hundred percent. And well, you know, um, that's that that's huge because I've been I've been married for almost thirty years. It's going on twenty nine, and she, uh-huh. my wife hates wrestling, boxing, MMA, jiu-jitsu, hates it all. <laughs> but, but, you know, back then in the, when I was coming up and paying my dues in pro wrestling, like if yeah. there was a show on Friday night, you know, and we'd have to get some, I'd have to get off of work, and I said, can you just please go with me so that you, we could drive in the carpool lane because I can't yeah. sit in traffic. And, you know, yeah. she'd have to sit there and wait forever till the show finished and all that so I could see how she did. So I'm like, all right, cool. But then – my my daughter, who's who's 25, she got bit by the bug a, a couple of years ago. Oh, uh, wow. One promoter, said, one promoter said, hey, why don't you have your daughter bring out the flag, the Mexican flag or whatever, and she was just over like Rover. I mean, start merchandise started selling. <laughs> so then, you know what, we had to take her to training. She had to learn to bump and all that stuff. And I, I said, well, look, you know, if, if she's going to do this, I have, to, I have to help her train. I don't want her to go through what I uh-huh. did or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so you, you know, you never know. What's gonna happen? So now my wife has a double whammy. Not only am I still in <laughs> now, now my both you guys, huh? Yeah, so she's getting it from both ends. But yeah, that to, yeah. to me, you know, real quick, I'm sorry for the people listeners. Yeah. You're here. You're at, at uh, Wrestle Boss with Fabi Chudo. I'm talking to Rachel Ann. Talk a little bit about weight cutting and stuff like that. But Jessica, I missed weight. And and what what I'm saying is, <clears throat> Cynthia Calvillo said, you know. She, there's no way she was 0.25 over. She said they, her corner men told me she's over, you know, and they didn't say that, oh, she's just going to be a little bit of like, man, she's over. But what they said, have, have you seen that thing that they have that they pull up when you have to take your clothes off? It's almost like a big shower curtain ring yeah. thing or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, they said she, she kind of held on to that and that, that it got her to the 0.25. So yeah. to me, that's cheating. Cynthia Gavir was saying, I fought a bantam weight. You know, she, I know she was way over than that. So the point I'm trying to make to you, and I'll pose this to Rachel Ann. Chael Sonnen says, I, I do not, I cannot fathom or understand why people would kill themselves 
to get to that weight. If I'm not at 185, I'm just going to fight at 205. I'm not going to I'm not going to kill myself to get there or whatever. So so give us your take on that. Do you think, hey man, especially now nowadays people are getting title fights with two weeks notice. So if you're a young fighter, it would behoove you to stay within a couple of you know maybe five six pounds because you never know when you're going to get that call, right? Uh, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's important to maintain your weight even when you when you don't have a fight scheduled. Um, because in the event that you do get you know, I had a three week notice fight in February and I had yeah. to drop about seven pounds within three weeks and then and then cut an additional ten to twelve. And you know, it was tough <laughs> but it, it takes a lot it takes a lot of um commitment and a lot of willpower. Um so it's basically how bad you want it, you know. So um as far as like <laughs> staying at that weight class or going up. Um, I think it just really depends on the fighter, where they fight better at, you know. For yeah. me personally, I feel that I'm better at – I'm good at 125. When I first started, I was fighting at 132, which is pretty heavy. Um, yeah. And now I look at those girls and I'm like, whoa, they're pretty big, like for me to be <laughs> fighting, you know. Yeah. But um, um, I think the weight cut is the fight before the fight, you know, and if – like I said, it takes it, it. The majority of it is willpower and and mindset. And you know, if you don't wake, make that weight cut, your your mind is already halfway gone. You know, you lost half the fight already. Yeah. And that's where yeah. you go into the fight with that mentality. So you either have to be one, be like way committed to be able to make that weight, or it, yeah, if you can't make that weight, you know, you know your body. Most people know their body, and they know if they can make that weight or not. And right. you know, they they need to well, just make the best decisions because you already are. You can anticipate losing a fight already if you're missing right. weight. Oh, we're Mexican. You know, I, I like, you know, tacos de carnitas and, you know, tortas oh, yeah. de carne asada and all that. So when Sergio and I, who was my radio partner for years, uh-huh. when we started training jiu-jitsu, and we, you know, we started, you know, really starting to learn, and, and Delo taught us a lot, man. I mean, just in the, the the short time that we trained with him and everything, and he said, well, you know, you need to go compete at Grapplers Club because you have to test your skills, you know. You're not just yeah. training to train. So I've always competed at heavyweight because, you know, we're, we're Mexican. Uh-huh. Well, my, yep, my partner, Sergio, he, you know, he had to take it one step further and weigh in with the with the Slurpee from 7-Eleven and, like, ding-dongs or whatever. Oh, wow. And that was, <laughs> that was back when we had MySpace back then. That's how long ago that was. Oh, man. And I swear, we came back, and Delo goes, if I ever see you do that, <laughs> goes, I swear <laughs> to God, he goes, I'm going to make you go six rounds with black belts and and you'll never do that again. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, because he would get. He said, "You're not taking it serious. It's not funny." You know, if you're gonna compete or whatever. So he learned a hard lesson on that day or whatever. But anyways. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I definitely could relate. I mean, my coach would de- not be having any of that. Yeah, yeah. He, he you know, you know, Jerson. Jerson, like you said, oh, yeah. he he would yeah, not be he, having you know, that. <laughs> And he practices what he preaches. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're a big old heavyweight dude with your belly hanging over, he's going to be like, how can you take me serious? But that dude is in shape, and, and uh-huh. you know, he just doesn't mess around. So it, it, yeah. it it's huge. But anyways, Rachel, I, you know, I got to tell you, I appreciate you coming on. And, it, and it's true. It's good to have somebody to bounce some stuff off or whatever, especially somebody like Rachel who's been, you know, in the game and knows what it's like to train, knows what it's like to weight cut, you know, and all that stuff. So I appreciate you coming on. I got a, I got a couple of more people that that are going to come on and, and and for lack of a better term, try out or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah. I think I think it's cool. I think we got something here. It's good to have somebody. Definitely, who's been man. In the keep game. keep me in touch. Keep in touch. And you know, I had a yeah, great time today. Thank you for having me on. Um, and, and yeah, I'm I look forward you. to. I think Joey Chaos is going to call me and go, hey, maybe we could get Rachel Ann to do some pro wrestling or whatever. And I'm going to say, well, <laughs> it, it, that's the hardest transition because it's so different. You know, you're used to putting hands on people, and it's totally different when you when you become a pro wrestler or whatever. But as you uh-huh. get acclimated to the pro uh-huh. wrestling, so you'll, you'll kind of see what we're talking about or whatever. So we look forward to that. So real quick, awesome. Rachel Ann, uh, can you give out your social media and all that so that people can follow you? Definitely. If you you guys want to check me out on Instagram, it's Miss Gems herself. Um, yeah, and Rachel Ann on Facebook. So check me out. Miss, give me a follow. Shoot me a DM, and yeah, we'll keep in touch. Miss Gems herself. Yeah, that, I thought that's yeah. what it was for for your. Sorry, I was writing that down. <clears throat> 
Uh-huh. Hey, well, we look forward to, you know, even if, if things don't work out, which I think they will, get you back on. And so yeah. we can, you know, uh, make sure we have everybody knowing exactly what's going on from somebody who knows. Big thank you to, of course, Joey Chaos, who came and talked a little bit about XPW and talking about wrestling training and all that. Make sure you check him out. And, of course, Ed Suarez, LFA. Don't forget, they're going to get ready to come back. and do, That's that's great fights, man. I'm telling you, Mark Bieri, between all him and Ed and all that, they put together some slamming fights that are really cool. So make sure you check it out. Uh, hey, real quick, Rachel, and before we get out of here, any plans to, to fight again in the near future, or what's, what's the game plan? Man, our gym just opened up this week. I'm actually going to go to my first class tonight. Um, and, yeah, I'm always open. So I, I really, we really don't know. You know, we just got to take it day by day, you know. Yeah. Everyone's talking about a resurgence of a second wave. So not yeah, on wood, everything works out, you know. But, yeah. yeah, I'm definitely open to fights in the near future, and I will definitely keep you posted on that. All right. I think we got to do a live broadcast from Gerson so that, that way we can um, uh, get that get that kick on tape. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to Luis. I'll say, I'll say, Luis, take one for the team, my man. <laughs> <laughs> and take it for me, so. All it. right, Richard. Hey, a million thank yous for coming. I really appreciate it. Hey, big ups to Lucha Central and, of course, Kevin Kleinrod for making this all possible. We'll see everybody here next Tuesday. Make sure you check us out. We'll be back next Tuesday, and we look forward to seeing you. If you're listening to this and you haven't visited LuchaCentral.com, it's time to do it. LuchaCentral.com is the online home for Lucha Libre, where you can get all of the top news in English and in Spanish. Find the best curated video content and original content not seen anywhere else. Find when Lucha Libre events would be happening in your area. Find photo galleries from top photographers covering Lucha Libre around the world. From weekly polls to annual awards. Seen and read by top executives in all of the major Lucha Libre promotions across the globe. And on top of that, it's free. LuchaCentral.com, your centralized place for all things Lucha Libre.